seven years ago, uh, uh, really uh, six uh, years ago, was founded a new enterprise with all the uh, institutes that are working in the uh, field of uh, biotechnology and medicine development. And this enterprise has 53 institutes. By the way, this, in this enterprise, the research, development, uh, production, introduction in the social practice, and the commercialization is a cycle closed, a, a closed cycle. Then uh, this means that in each institute, or uh, some of the institute close the cycle uh, at the research to the, uh, the introduction in the social practice. All this institute produces 76% uh, of all the drugs, medical drugs, that is needed in Cuba. And export more than uh, several hundred million dollars each, each year. And in this institute was founded in the more difficult moment of, the, of our country in the 19s after the collapse of the Soviet Union we lost off the economic relation with the Soviet Union and uh, Fidel found this institute uh, at the beginning, the CEGB. Uh, here is the, this institute, our institute, my institute, and uh, this is the principal building. Here is the research and development part, but also we have production plant, we have facility by agriculture facility and animals facility in, inside the institute. And over here is the Neuroscience Institute and other and other at the 53 uh, Institute are very close at, uh, one to other. This is the outcome, how, uh, the evolution of the outcome in the last year. At the beginning, three products and now uh, more than 42 products are uh, registered not only in Cuba but in several countries. We have uh, more than 800 sanitary registered around the world and uh, patient, uh, patents, about uh, 2,000 of patents in other countries, including uh, some countries of uh, Europa, Asia, and uh, Latin American countries, of course. But you see, we are, don't have any points in the United States. The reason, maybe you know exactly. Uh, a reference, uh, external reference in, in 2009 was published that uh, between the uh, developing, uh, developing uh, countries, Cuba has the most established biotechnology industry. However, uh, we feel that we have to improve and to introduce some modification in the development of, the, uh, uh, of our uh, institution, the Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology. And we are making, right in this moment, a diagnostic of our weakness in order to correct some of this weakness as is possible. Uh, now, uh, I would like to present you this slide. Uh, I know that you know that this slide between the this double, uh, drug discovery and the approved drugs are a very far way to, to make uh, from uh, 10,000 compounds or molecules, only one is approved the, uh, after 12, 15 years uh, approximately. And this is why, because it's a, a lot of uh, uncomplicated state, uh, step, and these steps are uh, expensive and uh, consuming time. And we are trying to identify which a technology with tools is possible to introduce in order to make more shorter this process and uh, the, uh, uh, make the cost lower than uh, at the moment. By the way, the Cuban attenuation coefficient here is 10,000. The Cuban attenuation coefficient is less. Uh, we have about uh, 1.5 uh, 
1,000 uh, uh, molecules, we obtain one approved uh, molecules, and the pipeline of uh, our institution is uh, 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 relative big and relative eff effective. The attenuation coefficient is going in two uh, moment, and the, the bigger attenuation coefficient is going in two moment, from the discover, uh, the discover to the preclinical and from the preclinical to the clinical. And then one of the tools is the molecular imaging and the structural and functional imaging can short this uh, process. And we'll try to explain some example. The second reason is a uh, reason that you know uh, very well is the problem is how to transform the molecular knowledge into understanding of the complex problem at cell, tissue, organ, and organism level. That problem is not too easy. That problem has a, a, a lot of point of view, and, but imaging method can give some information from molecules, tissue, organ, and organized, and the, point, uh, the top and down and point, uh, bottom up uh, point of view are possible to uh, increase the effectiveness by uh, imaging uh, methods. The third and last uh, reason that we are trying to introduce the imaging method more and more in, that, in our uh, center and in, in the Cuban biotechnology is the Terranostic. You know the tendency that uh, to have a nanoformulation inside uh, this nanoformulation we can have uh, active drugs, uh, uh, some uh, molecules to improve the solubility, to improve the pharmacokinetics and the biodistribution of the, of the uh, formulation, and uh, also to imagine this process in order to uh, evaluate in the preclinical and in some uh, uh, stage, stage uh, evaluate the effective of this uh, uh, formulation. These uh, are producing a revolution, a new concept and platform for the biotechnology at the moment. And uh, between the methods, here is uh, several of the methods used. Only the magnetic resonance can give us uh, anatomic, physiological, and molecular information. However, magnetic resonance is a very expensive method, have a resolution uh, about 10 microns to 100 microns, in depends of the equipment of, of, and the experiment, but the weakness more important is that the sensibility of the magnetic resonance is only 0.1 micromol. Is several uh, ways to, uh, to increase the sensibility of the magnetic resonance uh, during the story, the history of the magnetic resonance was improving the sensibility uh, step by step. But in the last years, in the last 10, 15 years, appeared a new way, a biochemical and chemical way to improve the uh, sensibility of this uh, uh, imaging method. Uh, this is in the base of contrast agents. The contrast agents uh, are two types of intrinsic contrast agent and extrinsic contrast agent. The first uh, intrinsic contrast agent is the molecule of, of hemoglobin. The hemoglobin have several state, magnetic state, in depends of the conformation, the molecular conformation. The oxyhemoglobin is a diamagnetic complex, and the desoxyhemoglobin is a strong magnetic complex. Then, when it's going on, at the tissue level, some physiological process, more and more, uh, in depends of the intensity of the physiological process, uh, uh, more uh, hemoglobin, oxyhemoglobin, become to be a uh, desoxyhemoglobin. And that process is ca uh, can be followed at the organ and tissue level by the changing of the magnet magnet magnetic propieties of this complex. Uh, Few, this uh, is used for the functional magnetic resonance that have a very uh, strong impact in the clinic uh, at, the, at the moment, during 20 years, the last 20 years. However, in the last years, appear new direction. 
it's possible to have a sobreexpression by a gene a treatment, a sobreexpression of a metalloprotein. This metalloprotein mm -hmm. finds some ions inside the cell or inside the tissue, and it, the uh, combination of this metalloprotein with the produce a contrast agent. And is several work uh, going on in, at the moment uh, with this uh, uh, mine idea. But in the, at the moment, the more important contrast agent uh, used is the gadolinium TPA in the red box. This gadolinium TPA uh, has been, uh, are using uh, during 20 years, the last 20 years also, like functional magnetic resonance. But in the last five, 10 years, the gadolinium TPA was com uh, combined, was conjugated with several uh, uh, proteins proteins, uh, peptides, uh, albumin, polyethylene glycol, polyamide, and so on and so And then when you conjugate that uh, molecule with the gadolinium TPA that is a strong paramagnetic, you can then follow the movement of that uh, molecule inside the, uh, the living uh, body in vivo, uh, in, in, real, uh, in real time. Other uh, uh, nanoformulation is the uh, uh, magnetic nanoparticle. The magnetic nanoparticle to be uh, biocompatible, we uh, use a polyethylene glycol or some biopolymer in order to uh, make this nanoparticle uh, biocompatible, but also it's possible to conjugate different molecules, therapeutic agent, uh, per, uh, permission uh, enhancing, uh, 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 contrast agent and so and so. And then this capsule can have a several therapeutic action. This means that it uh, is a, a, a combined therapy. Also is, uh, are uh, several works in the field of teranostic, the nano, uh, is used the nanocarbon as teranostic uh, 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 a teranostic particle. But uh, I believe that the best way to increase the impact of the teranostic in the biotechnology is to use several molecules like dendrimer and polyethylene glycol that are flexible framework, uh, uh, flexible molecular framework. You can control the size, you can control the mass, you can control the uh, number of active sites to be conjugated with different molecules. And also the polyethylene glycol is something like uh, uh, the dendrimer. Uh, lastly, is a group of uh, mo uh, macromolecular formation like lipoprotein, ferritin, liposome, and so, and virus-like pa uh, particle that can be charged with paramagnetic uh, agents, paramagnetic contrast agent, and then it can be followed inside the organism and is uh, also uh, some works in this direction. The uh, situation at the moment is that the improvement of the sensibility from magnetic resonance become from uh, uh, one micromole to some picomoles in the last five years. That means that the problem of sensibility, in principle, for each of the tasks, uh, this is different. For the, in principle, the problem of the, uh, of the sensibility in the magnetic resonance is solved by this way. It's, uh, it's solved by this way using the dreamer and so uh, the uh, macro formation that I told uh, about. What is the task of the imaging in this complex of a step uh, that I present to you uh, is uh, the proof of biology and the proof of concept. In the base of these uh, ideas, uh, the FDA has a right that as a key technology to uh, the imaging are a key technology to overcome the stagnation of the development and registration of the innovative medicine. And we believe in that. We are doing 
all that is possible to, uh, to uh, support that idea. As other workers more recently uh, uh, say that you can replace, reduce, and refining the use of animal models. You know that it, that is a, a very big problem, ethic problem, is a complicated problem, expensive problem, and so. And other tasks are in different uh, articles, in different papers are described for the imaging. Let uh, me uh, present you some examples. Our first work was not in CEB, was in the Medical Biophysics Center. Uh, we developed a, a study of the sickle cell disease. You know that it is a genetic disease coming from Africa, especially. And this disease is a response of the malaria. And, and uh, the hemoglobin is changing only one amino acid by other one. I don't remember. I think that uh, glutamic by binding, by, uh, binding, by, by limb, uh -huh. and this produce a conformation, a change of conformation of the hemoglobin that in presence uh, with low concentration of oxygen, this hemoglobin become to be aggregation process, become to be a polymerization process and a, a hell formation. And we uh, was working before this in the material industry by mag with magnetic resonance. And we had uh, uh, several works in the cement to agglutination process. And this is something like cement agglutination process. And that tools that we developed for the cement uh, was applied uh, to this. What is uh, the response when this process is going at molecular level? By the way, this uh, is a, a, a mo the first molecular disease that was described uh, by Linus Pauling uh, uh, and, so, and so and so. Uh, this half were more than one century the discovery of this disease. Then, when increase the microviscosity in, in, in the red cell, it's producing a uh, reduction of the permeability of the membrane. Is uh, the microviscosity increase the, uh, the elasticity of the membrane change uh, several times. And then the agglutination between, not only inside the red cell, but bet between the red cell, then the hydrodynamic and the rheology of the red cell in the microcirculation change and produce a vaso-occlusive cr crisis. Uh, we believe that it's possible to find, our hypothesis is possible to find a molecular parameter a molecular parameter associated with this polymerization process that have some connection with the state of the patient. This means if we study this, pro uh, sorry, this process, the kinetics of this process, uh, our hypothesis was to we can find uh, a parameter that is related with the state of the patients. Here I will uh, uh, show you this is one curve of changing one parameter, magnetic resonance parameter. The, the mean of this parameter is not important at, at the moment. T1 and T2. This parameter is related with the microviscosity, with the movement, with the uh, rota uh, correlation rotation time is uh, related to the movement, the molecular movement. And we demonstrate this is the hemoglobin A, the hemoglobin A also, a normal uh, person. And for the sick persons, we have this type of curve. And each time after uh, which, uh, the, this parameter is decreasing in two times. And as, after the decrease in uh, several uh, times, uh, then uh, is uh, some stable process. And this, uh, our hypothesis was that this time is associated with the time of the inverse uh, reaction. At some moment, this reaction is 
inverse go in one direction and the inverse direction. But after this moment, the reaction is going only in one direction. Then when the red cell go to the lung and take oxygen and go to the tissue and give this uh, oxygen to the tissue and it's coming back to the lung, if the time coming back to the lung is shorter than this parameter, no problem, it's not polarization, uh, no polymerization process and the, uh, uh, occur the reverse process. But if the delay time, this delay time, is shorter than the time that need the red cell to go back, then the process is uh, uh, reverse, uh, go in only one direction, and is a hell formation. And we develop a, a magnetic resonance a homemade equipment in order to introduce this in our hospital. And we study 300 of patients with this uh, uh, disease. By the way, in the world, we have 200, uh, 200 million persons that carry this disease. And here is the uh, electronic, uh, uh, electron paramagnetic resonance, spin paramagnetic resonance results. Uh, we measure the correlation time, the rotation correlation time of the hemoglobin and at the same time is increasing the uh, correlation time. That means that it's associated with the agglutination process. And here we measure by this method the microviscosity inside uh, this uh, process. Then uh, we uh, have a confirmation of our hypothesis in first approximation. But we began to study some patients Without crisis, we determined for these 300 uh, uh, patients, uh, some of them uh, uh, childs, we determined the delay time out the crisis. The uh, uh, state of the, the patient, this delay time. Uh, when this patient was going, this is a concrete uh, patient, go to the crisis, situation, the uh, uh, vasoclusive crisis, then the delay time is going, is decreasing. That means that the crisis is possible to be, uh, to know when it uh, will uh, become. And we classify the uh, delay time for the normal patient, sorry, the patient out the crisis uh, in the uh, region and the crisis region, and we have a, a methodic to follow in all the patients in the hematology uh, service that follow all of this patient to uh, predict when the person are going on the crisis, become to the crisis situation. After this, uh, we try to find different way to modify the, this reaction. Uh, to uh, uh, decrease the stability of the polymer was two ways. The first way, using ultrasound, electromagnetic uh, uh, physical ac action. And the second one was uh, by biochemical uh, and chemical application. And uh, we find a uh, one aldehyde, the quadridroxy trimethoxybenzaldehyde. I don't know how in English. Uh, uh, even in Spanish, to me, it's difficult to say this word. This is a very small molecule, aldehyde. Uh, it's a non-toxic compound. This is the binding gene that is used for the ice cream and so on and so on. Then, and why the binding gene was the only molecule that we have in Santiago of the list of aldehyde that was published in the paper before us. And that uh, was because we have uh, in Santiago a good industry of ice cream. And we take the binding in the microscope, the shape, the morphology of the uh, cell change. Uh, we study this by electronic microscope, it is OT microscope. But after that, and with the other data, uh, we have the uh, possibility to. Uh, make a, a clinical trials. The clinical trials, some patients 
as control and other patients under treatment with vinegin, vinegin each day. And after 40 days, the delay time increased in two and a half times again. That means that this vinegin we proved after, well, this data I will not present it, it's not related to the magnetic resonance. Uh, this vinegin is associated with the hemoglobin in that side that the hemoglobin in have interaction with the other hemoglobin in this case. And then the stability of the polymer uh, is lower and the reaction go uh, back uh, during more, uh, more time. That is, the, uh, in general, the uh, explication. After this, we develop a system of uh, 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 differential equation to uh, st study the stability of this system and the different components and these coefficients are related to uh, different parameters uh, the pH, the temperature, the concentration of hemoglobin, uh, fetal hemoglobin, and so and so. And uh, this uh, model uh, uh, allow us to explain all the data uh, that obtaining by magnetic resonance and other methods. Now, let me go to the second uh, example, a more recently example. At this is the cicatrization uh, uh, program that we have. The slide, the uh, picture uh, will be no nice. I'm sorry, but uh, we uh, have uh, a drugs, uh, successful drugs, the Everprot, in the base of uh, epidemical growth factor. It's, I think that is the unique drugs that uh, can uh, uh, guarantee the healing process in the diabetic foot ulcer in, in, in no depends of the dimension of the state of the ulcer. The ulcer in a very advanced state like this one in the calcaneus uh, uh, can uh, during several uh, weeks can uh, uh, have a healing process, as is shown here. This is a photographic, uh, no controlled uh, evidence. But we try by magnetic resonance to follow this process, to follow this process to, in order to have more evidence, but also to understand the mechanism of action of the AGF and the cicatrization uh, uh, process. And then I will... Uh, uh, show you some uh, slide. Uh, the first problem to solve, to study the foot, uh, is the position of the foot. In the head, it's more easy to make a, a good magnetic resonance. And then we develop a special device inside the coil, the magnetic resonance coil, in order to put both feet and to control the position, and if the position is right, then we control the position and to fix the position during one study, one magnetic resonance study, and during the time, because this patient was followed during the uh, treatment process. Here, in this device, uh, is uh, radio frequency compatible and so and so. That is a very complicated requirement, uh, the, uh, te technical uh, requirement. We put some external market, these ampules. And you can see it here in the 3D reconstruction, this external market. And it's a, a geometric property that for two lines, it, only one plane can uh, uh, contain these two lines. And here you can see in the uh, sagittal uh, uh, slide the two points of these uh, external uh, markers. And with this external marker, and with, with this device, uh, we can then plan in the coronal uh, slide because this is parallel to the, the external marker, the sagittal perpendicular to the coronal and the axial perpendicular to the uh, coronal or to the sagittal. And then we, in one study, we have both fit in the coronal uh, image, both fit in the axial image and only one fit, the sick fit uh, uh, with ulcer in the sagittal. 
and this is all the parameter. We have a several studies, including magnetic resonance spectroscopy in vivo in the site where is the ulcer uh, local, uh, uh, locally. And with healthy uh, volunteers, we uh, demonstrate that the position error and the error uh, measure the area of some uh, structure, uh, anatomical structure uh, in the foot, for example, here the calcaneus, in different position of the calcaneus, the error is less than 5 than 8%. Then every change below uh, this error, we don't take in account, and up, above this error is then taken in account. And then in our uh, point of view, we have five uh, goals that is very important. Firstly, we ha have a, a long study for a healthy volunteer. We have external markers. We can measure the area, the volume of internal anatomic biomarker. We can simultaneously uh, study the, uh, uh, the sick and the healthy foot and compare one with the other one. And lastly, uh, the magnetic resonance uh, before the treatment and after the treatment. And here is some slide. Here uh, in the red uh, arrow, you can see the uh, lesion. Here is the lesion. This is uh, before the treatment, 40 days of treatment, and 49 days of treatment. And so, that, uh, and so and so, here are other patients, and you can see how in the 3D reconstruction it's changing. This is the lesion, the ulcer, and here is the new epithelium between the red and the blue uh, lines is the new epithelium that is uh, uh, up, uh, as a consequence of the treatment and the restoration of the uh, tissue. And here... At the, uh, and then we change, we measure the change of area and change of volume, but because volume and area have a different uh, rate of change, and we measure simultaneously the edema, the edema associated with the uh, ulcer. And the volume of the edema is a very important uh, biomarker to have information about the healing process because the edema produce a pressure uh, against the formation of the new tissue of the uh, granulation uh, process in the uh, uh, healing uh, process. Uh, here we measure by magnetic resonance diffusion weighting imaging the diffusion coefficient of the free water of the diabetic foot and the healthy foot of the, the patient. And you see that the curve tend with the treatment, uh, treatment uh, tend to the uh, healthy, uh, healthy foot, the ADC. The diffusion coefficient is strong related to the density of cell, is strong related to the tissue organization, and then we, is, we guarantee have a, a guarantee that here and here we're measured in the same condition, we can have a relative variation of the tissue texture as a consequence of the healing process. And this is uh, related with different uh, physiological process, uh, the free water, the associated water uh, in health uh, situation for healthy sun and no healthy son, and we have evidence, strong evidence with this data for all these patients. 36 patients was under uh, study in a phase four uh, trials. And here is all the data. We have the area value, uh, variation, the volume variation, the edema variation, the ADC, and the spectroscopy variation. Uh, only two words about the spectroscopy. Here, we don't have uh, strong evidence, but we have some idea that in the, here is fat, this is the line of fat, and the healthy, the fat is two times uh, bigger, the metabolic action, and the uh, choline, 
and creatinine is two times uh, bigger in, uh, in the healthy than in the diabetic food. But this evidence is not enough strong to have some conclusion. However, we have a more or less uh, a several point of view of the same process of healing process under treatment by EGF. And then uh, in the literature, we uh, have uh, several uh, papers uh, thinking or explaining some of our data. For example, is a model uh, and we are destroying, uh, uh, we are uh, building uh, now a model. We have edema information, diffusion information, interstitial uh, pressure information, and we are, uh, 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 with this information, we need to measure epoxia and uh, microcirculation. By the way, we are developing now a method to uh, measure microcirculation. Uh, uh, a low, uh, far away of the ulcer, without contact with the ulcer. But the more important that I want to uh, underline is that the mechanical forces, it's a several works in this direction, I don't have any uh, question about, that the mechanical forces can modulate the extracellular matrix, can modulate the process in the membrane, can modulate the process in the cytoplasma, and can modulate the biochemical process in the cytoplasma and the, uh, can modulate the hen uh, revolution. That is a very important to uh, uh, explain the healing process in the diabetic food ulcer. But the magnetic resonance is, uh, is very expensive. It's not possible to do a, a lot of patient, to study a lot of patient. It's a very difficult procedure and we develop in order to uh, solve that to have uh, everywhere in Cuba and, and somewhere uh, in other countries a, a special device and that you can fit uh, the position of the foot and by photographic, digital photographic, you have a stereotactic photographic. Here you have two parameters, one number and one letter. And then by these two parameters you can follow the position of the patient and to guarantee the position of the patient and the medical doctor uh, uh, make the cure inside this uh, device developed by us. And here you have the evolution uh, of different patients. At the moment we have only uh, 44 patients uh, under study. And here you have external marker in, to uh, have a guarantee of this uh, position and the dimension of the ulcer. And here I am showing you the curve of all these patients under study. This curve, the morphology of the curve, the behavior of the curve, present two exponents. And these two exponents are associated, first one, with the contraction of the healing process. It's a mechanical process. And the second one is the restoration of the new tissue, the granulation tissue. And with these two exponents, we have a question, and we ask which is the differential equation. We have this solution, and we are destroying a building, sorry, a new uh, uh, phenomenological uh, uh, model to understand the uh, uh, cicatrization process. Here you can see the measure, the experimental point of the granulation process in this patient that under study with the stereotactic uh, frame. And at the, uh, simultaneously, by magnetic resonance, we are studying the cicatrization process in anim animal models. Here you uh, see the lesion uh, and, you, uh, and different lesions to control one uh, by other one. And the EGF is labeled with gadolinium TPA. This protein is uh, uh, the EGF, you know, is not a big protein, but can be labeled with gadolinium TPA. We demonstrate by magnetic resonance that this level is stable and so and so. And we increase the resolution and measure the dimension, the thickness of the different uh, 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 layer uh, in the uh, skin, in the skin for animals, epidemic, dermis, and so. And 
uh, in order to do what? We are trying to change and to have a new formulation of the EGF. The EGF treatment now is intralation injection. This is a very aggressive. Otherwise, it's not possible if you don't have this treatment, you then uh, need amputation. And it's better to have an injection than an amputation. But we are trying this e, the EG, EGF uh, level with TPA to conjugate with a nanovesicle, which is a polymer uh, uh, formation, in order to protect the EGF. But because the EGF uh, needed to be injected because in the infection process is a degradation of the EGF. But if we protect in, sometimes the EGF inside a nanovesicle, then we can uh, have a more efficacy in the treatment. And with here, uh, by this image, you have the uh, kinetic of the here is a millimeter uh, in the deep, how the EGF with the vesicle and the uh, gadolinium TPA is going inside the, uh, the skin and uh, in the time how all these curves are, uh, are uh, changing during the time. This is more or less a biodistribution and a pharmacokinetics of the EGF and another vesicle by imaging. The problem is that all our results is are uh, doing with a uh, clinical MRI equipment. We work after the clinical service in the night and the Saturday and the Sunday. And this clinical equipment is a good uh, clinical equipment, however, don't have the enough resolution. And we are trying, that is why I am here in in Europa, we are trying to contact group is a special MRI system for animal models, which have 10 times or 100 times more resolution that we have with the clinical equipment. But this is going on, and we have a strong evidence. The other uh, uh, project is associated with other unique uh, monoclonal antibody for the treatment of a high great gliomas. This is the nemotosumat. The gliomas, you know that it is a very aggressive tumor. And the survivor of the patient is in three, four, six months. And we have patients that have high grade glioma during more than four, five years. And we then study a pharmacovigilance to answer when we can stop the treatment. Is the tumor response uh, positive, no positive, stable, and how to stop or how to make more, uh, 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 to increase the period of treatment in, the, in this patient. And then uh, I am showing quickly uh, with have registered several MRI imaging in child, 35 child. We make a reconstruction of the tumor here and the different part of the tumor. And with, this, uh, uh, with a stable uh, protocol, a very strong uh, protocol that in, uh, is uh, from the literature and some uh, modification that we introduce in order to have the same position and the same condition each time and we study the tumor uh, uh, for each patient. Uh, this is uh, more or less the reconstruction of the tumor. And here you can see different zones. And this zone, the change of one zone for the other one, is the mobility, the density, the microviscosity, the texture of the tumor in the different region. We have three regions, that means three different textures three different density of cell, three different uh, diffusion coefficients, and so. And with this, you can follow each part uh, along uh, another one. And here for the patient, we have the volume of each part during the time, uh, three uh, years and three months, three years, six months, 
uh, December uh, 2010, uh, February 2002, and uh, we uh, build a diffusion coefficient map to have an idea that how is growing the tumor if it's growing, and how is uh, uh, decreasing the volume of the tumor if it's decreasing. Uh, this is a, a tensor of the uh, diffusion coefficient in the different tissue uh, at, uh, for a, a specific patient. And uh, simultaneously, we measure an acetylaspartate, creatinine, choline uh, ratio that is in the literature uh, in the side of the tumor and other in the border of the tumor and in the healthy side equivalent to uh, the tumor for all the patients, and uh, after that we have a positive, a stable, negative, the uh, response under the treatment. Uh, by the way, uh, I uh, may uh, underline that this tumor, is, uh, this treatment is nimotosumat together with radiotherapy and chirurgy. Okay, and uh, it was a group of, of control uh, without uh, the same uh, with other formulation, but animal models. And we are trying to uh, have a better uh, formulation of this monoclonal antibody of the uh, Institute of uh, in Molecular Immunology. The same is we are doing for several uh, uh, pectin and some protein that is related to the stroke in animal models. We are proving the effectiveness of this different protein. We measure the stroke area. We produce the stroke and by different maps of imaging and a, a comparison with histology. We have evidence of changing of this uh, stroke area and the composition of the stroke. But you know that the stroke have a very heterogeneous uh, composition. Other project is related to the arthritis rheumatoid. Uh, some weeks ago, we finished a clinical trial, trial phase one with a pectid uh, CHB uh, A14, uh, and we mentioned the dimension of the erosion, the edema, and the distance between the uh, in the articulation by magnetic resonance, resonance and other works related for. Uh, combination of some interferon, interferon alpha and interferon beta, and the uh, toxicological influence in the different organ of animal. Finally, this is uh, one of our work, uh, was the study of biodistribution and pharmacocinetic of n magnetic nanoparticles modified with polyethylene glycol. This is the more close of our work to the real theranostic process. It is uh, well known that the intrinsic magnetism of the nanoparticle depends on the dimension. The relaxation mechanism depends on this dimension. But the more important is that, that the biodistribution and the pharmacocinetic depend on the dimension and the uh, conformation of the molecule. Then we measure by uh, different methods the dimension, the distribution of the nanoparticle produced. This is the hydratation, uh, hydrodynamic dimension, the relaxivity, the sus magnetic susceptibility inside the tissue. And uh, we follow this in some models uh, the pharmacocinetic and biodistribution, but magnetic resonance in uh, the spleen and the uh, liver and uh, the kidney uh, and so on. And then here, uh, let me show you, this is the curve. This is the introduction of the magnetic nanoparticle inside the liver. Sorry, this is in Spanish, uh, uh, but it's close to Italy. Uh, two zones in the uh, liver. Here is as a control in the muscle, no nanoparticle change in the muscle. The uh, entrance, the steady state, and the excretion uh, during uh, 520 hours. And uh, here is the kinetic parameter measured in animal models in vivo. 
and here is a new uh, uh, physiological route associated with this experiment. Thank you very much. I hope that we can see some of you in Cuba, if it's all better, and to Cuba is possible to come only by two way, by plane or by ship.